Hi everyone, I'm going to take a few minutes to talk through an ultrasound guided serratus anterior block in anticipation of our upcoming hands-on session. So we'll start off talking about the indications for this procedure. The photo on the right shows the area of distribution of anesthesia for the procedure. Any patient with multiple anterior or lateral rib fractures would be a good candidate for the procedure, and you could also consider this for a patient who needs a chest tube. Any patient who has isolated posterior rib fractures probably would not get much release from this block. Here's a photo of where we're going to be putting the ultrasound probe. So we're going to put it in the mid-axillary line at about the fourth or fifth rib with the probe marker pointed up towards the patient's head. And then with the probe in that orientation, this is the anatomy that we're going to be looking at. So we can see the fourth rib here, the fifth rib here, and the pleura here just deep to that. And then our more superficial muscular landmarks are going to be the latissimus dorsi muscle here and the serratus anterior muscle here. This slide here shows where we're going to be putting the needle to do this block. This is another plane block rather than a specific nerve block, so you don't have to get the needle actually next to any nerve in particular. You need to get it in the same plane as nerves and then inject a large volume of liquid into the plane, which will cause the liquid to spread out among that plane and reach the nerves. So this slide shows two different options. Usually what I'll do is option one shown on the screen, which is here putting the needle in between the latissimus muscle and the serratus anterior muscle and injecting there. If your patient is particularly thin or has low muscle mass, sometimes it's difficult to see, to differentiate between the latissimus dorsi and the serratus anterior muscle. And so in that case, option two might be helpful, um, which is where you would just put the needle just above the rib and inject into that plane there and either one will provide analgesia for your patient. This slide shows the equipment that you'll need for the procedure. So shown here is one of the echogenic needles that we have in the department with extension tubing attached, and it's shown here flushed with some saline syringes, some extra saline syringes, a 30 to 50 cc syringe for your medication, a chlorhexidine swab, and a sterile ultrasound probe cover. If you don't have access to the echogenic needle, you can create your own similar device using a spinal needle connected to two or more sets of IV extension tubing, again flushed through with saline. When preparing to do this block in the department, we do have an order set in Epic that we've created. So it's the set highlighted here, not the order panels, but the order set. And if you're not sure that you're in the right one, when you order it, it should look like this. So at the top will be this table that shows how much volume you should be injecting for each block. The order set will also prompt you to order the point of care ultrasound, and I'd really encourage you to save images not only while you're finding your landmarks, but also while you're injecting the medication. So again, this is where we're going to be putting the ultrasound probe over ribs four and five in the mid-axillary line. And then when we're doing the procedure, we're going to be putting the needle in on the short end of the ultrasound probe, which is going to allow us to see the needle in long axis to see the entire length of the needle so that we have the most precise control over exactly where the needle is. With the ultrasound probe in that orientation, this is the ultrasound image that you'll generate. So here we can see on the screen a rib and another rib with the pleura here deep to the ribs, and then our two muscular landmarks more superficial. So here's the latissimus dorsi muscle, and here's the serratus anterior muscle. Here's those labeled on the screen. And then here's a video of a block that was done in our department. So as the clip plays, you can see the pleura moving just down here. Superficial to the pleura, we have the serratus anterior muscle, and superficial to that, we have the latissimus dorsi muscle. And then you can see the needle coming in from the right side of the screen, and this anechoic area that you see expanding is the medication being injected. And so in this video, you can tell that the needle's in the correct plane because we can see the latissimus dorsi muscle just lifting off of the serratus muscle in its entirety, as if the two muscles are being unzipped. Seeing the latissimus dorsi muscle lift off like that tells us that we're in the correct fascial plane. So usually when I'm doing this procedure, I'll initially have my needle hooked up to a saline syringe. I'll insert my needle, and when I think I'm in the right plane, I'll have my second operator inject one to two cc's of saline. That saline injection will cause some hydrodissection of the tissues and will help me differentiate whether my needle is still within one of the muscles, in which case we'd see separation of the muscle fibers bounded within the muscle versus whether the needle is within the fascia, in which case we would see this sort of unzipping. And so if my needle is within one of the muscles, when I inject a couple of cc's of saline, I'll make a minor adjustment, again inject saline, and then once I know that I'm in the correct fascial plane, then I'll have my second operator switch the saline syringe out for the syringe of medication and inject the medication into the fascial plane. If you do those first couple of steps with saline rather than with the medication, you're not using up a few cc's of your medication, just identifying the correct fascial plane. 
When thinking about the complications of this procedure, the most common would be inadequate anesthesia. So whether that's because your needle was not in the correct plane, or just because you don't have great spread of the medication throughout the plane reaching the nerves. One of the most feared complications of the procedure is local anesthetic systemic toxicity, which would occur if the medication was injected directly into the patient's bloodstream. So a couple of safety checks when considering last. One is to have the patient on a cardiac monitor throughout the duration of the procedure. Another is to have intralipid ordered. So intralipid is the antidote for local anesthetic systemic toxicity. The order set that I showed earlier will prompt you to order the intralipid, including the correct dosing of it. Usually when I order it through the order set, the nurse actually pulls it and brings it to the bedside, but I would at a minimum have the nurse verify that it's available in the omni cell in the emergency department so that if you were to need it, you know it's nearby rather than having to come from central pharmacy. And the last tip I have in terms of preventing local anesthetic systemic toxicity is to find your needle tip every 5 cc's. And what I mean by that is that when I'm doing this procedure, I'll have my second operator inject 5 cc's of medication and stop. Because as you're injecting medication, you're ima you can imagine that you are injecting liquid into a potential space. And so as you inject liquid, you're causing shifting of some of the structures. And so it's not uncommon to lose sight of your needle tip as you're injecting liquid. After 5 cc's, I'll have the second operator stop. I'll verify that I can still see my needle tip. It's still exactly where I want it to be. If it's not, I'll make a minor adjustment until it is where I want it to be, and then have the operator inject another 5 cc's and stop and repeat in that way until I've injected all of the medication. Another complication to consider with this procedure is a pneumothorax, and so the best tip I have to help prevent this is that when you are aligning the trajectory of your needle to do the block, to line up your needle with the rib as a backstop. And so I'll show you what I mean by that. So here's that same image that we were looking at before. So here's the latissimus dorsi, here's the serratus anterior, here's one rib, here's another rib. And so now we can see our needle. And so what I'd advise is that when you're aligning your needle, you line it up so that the trajectory is such that if the patient coughs or if you lose track of your needle and advance it too far, you'll hit into a rib rather than a trajectory like this, where if you were to go in too far, you would be hitting the pleura and causing a pneumothorax. So if you create the trajectory with your needle that you would hit a rib rather than the pleura, you're much less likely to cause a pneumothorax. Thanks for listening. Please bring any questions, comments, concerns, or experiences from the department to our next session, um, and I look forward to seeing you all there.